Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University, Staff Training and Research Institute of Distance Education, Stride, Master's Degree Programs, Master of Arts, Distance Education, Made, First Year, ND412 Instructional Design, Block 3 Instructional Design Processes, Unit 11 The ADI Approach, Analyze, Design, Develop, Implement and Evaluate. 11.1 Introduction In Blocks 1 and 2, Volume 1, of this course, you have studied the meaning of learning and instruction. You have also studied in the previous units various learning theories and the perspectives of learning from various schools of thoughts such as behavioristic, cognitivist, and constructivist, Block 1. Besides, you have also studied various theories and models of instructional design, Block 2. These models of instructional design help you to acquire information, skills and attitude through a plurality of approaches, methods and techniques. These methods have a positive effect on the learners, including the way they learn. Therefore, no single model, method, approach and technique best suits all situations. Hence, there is a need to explore and use a variety of models to facilitate students' learning. Even these may differ from unit to unit, subject to subject, while addressing a heterogeneous group of learners. This demands the need for selection of approaches of instructional design. In this unit, we have discussed the ADI approach of instructional design. They are Analyze, Design, Develop, Implement and Evaluate, ADI. You will also learn about Adaptation to ADI approach, Rapid Prototyping, Dot, 11 point to learning outcomes, after going through this unit, you should be able to times define instructional design, times identify different phases in ADI approach, times describe the analysis phase, times explain the design phase, times describe the development phase, developing materials and writing a storyboard, times explain the implementation and evaluation phases, and Times differentiate between classic design approach and rapid prototyping approach. 11.3 Instructional Design ID Approach ID Instructional Design is a process for the design of learning situations and there are common tasks involved in most of the models available or on practice. The instructional designers and trainers use instructional design for different purposes. Whether it is designing a face-to-face -face or distance education or online course, a lesson plan for students of a particular class, writing a media script for the production of a program, audio, video or film, and designing multimedia script or storyboard for multimedia packages and learning objects, instructional design is commonly used. Certainly, the effectiveness of a program or a course, a unit, a lesson plan, Script and storyboard depends on the type of instructional design selected and developed for the purpose. A good instructional design certainly influences the learning environment and helps to enhance the quality of education in general. Instructional design is a systematic process for facilitating human learning. The process of instructional designing includes steps such as analyzing the learner's profiles, listing the instructional objectives and goals, development of materials, planning of intervention, to facilitate transfer of learning. Therefore, instructional design is the process of maximizing the effectiveness, efficiency of instruction and other learning experiences. This process consists broadly of determining the current state and needs of the learner, defining the end goal of instruction, and creating some intervention to assist in the transaction of learning. There are many instructional design models, REF. Block 2, Unit 5, which are used for the preparation of the print, video, audio or multimedia programs, and learning objects. Most of the current instructional design models are spin-offs or are some variations of this approach, according to Brown and Green, 2016. Instructional design is the systematic development of instructional specifications using learning and instructional theory to ensure the quality of instruction. It is the entire process of analysis of learning needs 
and goals and the development of a delivery system to meet those needs. It includes development of instructional materials and activities and tryout and evaluation of all instruction and learner activities. One of the most commonly used descriptions of instructional design development is AD, which is an acronym for Analyze, Design, Develop, Implement, and Evaluate. See Figure 11.1. Although many ID practitioners use ADI as a prescriptive model for developing instruction, it is actually a means of describing the essential components of any instructional design model. Molinda, 2003. Dot, scholars generally agree that ADI is an illustration of the essential steps of the instructional design development process. Molinda, 2003. Race Dempsey, 2002. Dot, According to Brown and Green, 2016, ADI is particularly useful as a framework for comparing and contrasting more formally and completely developed instructional design development models, according to Morrison, Ross, Kullman, and Kemp, 2011. ADI is an acronym referring to the major stages in the generic instructional systems design, IST, process, analysis, design. Development, Implementation and Evaluation The ADI approach is a framework that lists a generic process that instructional designers and training developers use as an effective training and performance support tool. It has five phases i.e. Analysis, Design, Development, Implementation and Evaluation. Instructional theories and models also play an important role in the design of instructional materials. Learning theories such as behaviorism, constructivism, social learning, and cognitivism help to shape and define the outcomes of the instructional materials. The ADI approach, which has evolved from many models, is a very popular approach used by the instructional designers across the world. The ADI approach provides a framework for instructional designers and training developers. The five phases analyze, design, develop, Implement and evaluate AD represent a dynamic, flexible guideline for building effective training and performance support tools. 1. Commonly accepted improvement to this approach is the use of rapid prototyping. This method is followed mainly for receiving continual or formative feedback while instructional materials are being created. You will read about this method in section 11.9 of this unit. The ADI approach is also used for development of multimedia programs and learning objects. The ADI approach was introduced by the Center for Educational Technology at Florida State University to explain the processes involved in the formulation of an Instructional Systems Development IST, Program for Military Inter-Service Procedures intended for the Army, Navy, Air Force and Marine Corps to train individuals to do a particular job. This approach has five phases and the idea is to complete each phase, analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate. Before moving to the next, let us discuss each phase in detail. 11.4 Analysis Phase Learning Environment Analysis It is seen that before starting development of any unit lesson plan audio-video multimedia program, several questions come to the mind of an instructional designer, i.e., who? Is the target audience? What is their learning styles? What is the purpose of developing? The material? What should be the nature of content and subject matter? These questions need to be answered in certain terms. While analyzing the learner's background profile, the exposure and conditions in which the instructional materials are to be used needs to be analyzed. For example, if we are developing a multimedia program for students, their interests, motivation level, etc. need to be considered. Even the hardware and software requirement for playback of multimedia programs needs to be studied and taken into consideration. Also, it is very important to decide the content delivery platform, i.e. computer, laptop, iPad, mobile phone, etc. Unless there is clarity on these issues, compatibility between the need and the outcome will not be achieved. 
Necessarily, analysis should capture the requirements and set of expectations from materials to be developed. In the analysis phase, the instructional problem is clarified, the instructional goals and objectives are established, and the learning environment and learners' existing knowledge and skills are identified. 11.4.1 Defining Learning Environment The whole range of components and activities within which learning takes place is referred to as learning environment. The learning takes place within a web of social relationships as teachers and pupils interact both formally and informally. The basic question that arises is how can we organize the environment that supports and enhances teaching and learning? How can the diverse needs of learners be addressed while conceptualizing any teaching and learning resources? For this, the physical and psychological dimensions of the environment are important and interrelated and need to be taken care of. 11.4.2 Components of a Learning Environment The learning environment refers to the diverse physical locations, contexts, and cultures in which students learn. As students learn in a wide variety of settings, such as indoor and outdoor environments, there is a need to link their varied experiences. Learning environment encompasses the culture of teaching and learning, which may be a classroom, online learning, as well as learning at a distance. This includes how individuals interact with and treat one another, as well as the ways in which teacher organizes an educational setting to facilitate learning. These may include tasks such as conducting classes in relevant setting, groupings, organizing the learning materials, or utilizing audio, visual, and digital technologies. The qualities and characteristics of a Learning environment are determined by a wide variety of factors such as institutional, policies, governance structures. Learning environments have both a direct and indirect influence on student learning, including their engagement in learning, their motivation to learn, and their sense of well-being, belonging, and personal safety. How learners interact with the other learners and with their peers may also be considered as key aspects of a learning environment. So, while designing any instruction for a target audience, the collection of data pertaining to learning environment should include the following components in the analysis phase. Who are the beneficiaries? Individual group, whether they are in formal, non-formal, informal system, whether supported with a facilitator or a peer learner, what kind of technical facilities are available with the learners, whether having access to infrastructural facilities including internet and required softwares, hardwares? If yes, what specifications and other sociocultural aspects will help the instructional designer in finalization of the design? In other words, learning environment facilitates student-centered learning, collaborative work, discovery and innovation, information exchange, active and inquiry-based learning, critical thinking and performance assessed by teachers, members, peers and self, the learning environment needs to be decided keeping in mind the characteristics of learners. Hence, information related to the learners, academic levels, and other attributes like skills, motivation, language competency, learning styles, and special needs should be gathered and accommodated in the material design. The needs of differently abled, Learners as well as learners from different backgrounds also should be considered while designing any instructional materials. 11.5 Design Phase Designing of Learning After the analysis phase, let us now come to the design phase. The design phase deals with learning objectives, assessment instruments, exercises, content, subject matter analysis, and lesson planning and media selection. The design Phase is where the instructional strategies are designed and media choices are made. The design phase should be systematic and specific. Systematic means a logical, orderly method of identifying, developing and evaluating a set of planned strategies targeted for attaining the project's goals. Specific means each element of the instructional design plan needs execution with attention to details. In this phase, the activities are formulating learning objectives, identifying appropriate 
content, selecting suitable methods of delivery and evaluating learning outcomes. In the case of a multimedia program, the interactivity aspect is also decided in advance. Some important considerations for the various sub-processes in the design phase also are content and strategies need to be contextually relevant, gender and racially sensitive, and should promote concerns related to environmental awareness, peace-oriented values, inclusion, recognize constitutional values, national integration and develop scientific temper in the design phase, the prototype. Testing of the material is also included so that necessary changes can be made before development. Now let us look at the various activities involved in the design phase. 11.5.1 Formulating Learning Objectives An objective is a statement of the intended performance of a learner. The performance identified is usually executable, observable and measurable. Since the terminal performance refers to modified behavior of the learner, an objective is also termed as behavioral objective. Sometimes it is termed as instructional objective because it provides direction to the teacher for selection of content and learning experiences for designing instruction. The statement of an objective for a learner is akin to the destination for a traveler. The destination and the route must be specified before a travel plan is made. Route points are analogous to enabling objectives, which facilitate the achievement of terminal objectives. If one did not know where one is going to reach, the person is not likely to reach there at all. It is the objectives I desire terminal abilities of the learners that decide that teaching learning strategies and resources that should be employed to match the learning styles of the students. Actually, in the entire teaching learning evaluation cycle begins with objective and ends with evaluation. The most important parameters in a specific objective are action. Process and output designed for the learner. Therefore, objectives need to be formulated carefully and should cover the cognitive, knowing, affective, feeling, and psychomotor, doing skill, domains of learning. Action verbs like define, list, compare, calculate, sequence, classify, judge, locate, evaluate, design, etc. can be used while stating the objectives. While designing, instructions, it is important to remember to specify objectives that are clearly defined, realistic, relevant, achievable and measurable. Refer Unit 13 of this block, dot, 11.5.2 to identifying appropriate content, the identification and selection of appropriate content is an important step in any instructional design process. Content analysis needs to be carried out and content which is difficult for learners needs to be identified. The sequencing of the content and its structuring needs to be done logically. There is a need to ensure that the content is relevant, appropriate and follows the pedagogic principles. Hence, content needs to be designed from simple to complex, known to unknown, concrete to abstract, general to specific. The following parameters need to be kept in mind while identifying and selecting the appropriate content. Times appropriate topics and themes for relevant stages of a learner's development. Times content to be actual and factually correct and objective-based. Times language and the linguistic content needs to be appropriate for the target group. Times continuity of content from theme to sub-theme. One level to the next level of the learner needs to be maintained. Times interdisciplinary and thematic linkages between topics listed for different themes, subjects, which fall under distinct disciplinary areas, times. Linkages between knowledge imparted in formal settings in different subjects and also with the learner's everyday experiences, times infusion of environment-related knowledge and concern in all subjects and at all. Levels, times sensitive to gender, religion, caste and class parity and needs of all learners including those with disabilities, times integration of activities focusing on related attitudes and values in every content, subject and at all levels, times ensures aesthetic sensibility and values by integrating the arts and heritage of crafts, 
In every aspect of the content selection, it must be ensured that the content is pedagogically structured and in consonance with the learner's profile, their age, level, interest, background, and learning styles. Dot, 11.5.3 Selecting suitable methods of delivery. The next step is to select a suitable method of delivery of the content after identifying the content. The content delivery mechanism may differ with nature and the level of learners. In the context of open and distance learning, the content is delivered through print, audio, video, and multimedia. For example, an audio program developed for Learners of music course will be more appropriate where, as in the case of social science course, the delivery can be through a lecture or panel discussion or through printed materials. The method of delivery should be suitable for learners as per their needs. Therefore, the learner profile needs to be kept in mind while selecting the suitable methods of delivery of content. Their age, attention span, interest, learning styles are very important to be considered while designing instruction for different media. Other methods of delivery like documentary, docudrama, features, role play, case studies, etc. can be thought of for inclusion. For example, in case of designing a multimedia program, suitable media, i. audio, graphics, animations, simulations, etc. need to be embedded within the presentation of content. A media mix of printed materials in combination with audio, video, graphics, animations, games, quizzes, puzzles, interactivity, etc. is appropriate and engaging for learners of various age groups. The constructivist methods like discovery, problem-solving, project method, observation, demonstration, and collaboration can also be adopted. 11.5.4 Evaluating learning outcomes Instructional design is concerned with the preparation of appropriate learning design for a meaningful and effective learning environment. Evaluation should be a way of assessing whether the intended learning objective has been achieved at the end of learning process. This also provides credible feedback on the extent to which learning has taken place. Therefore, at the design phase itself, Appropriate evaluation strategies need to be specified and inbuilt in the design itself. Such provisions in the form of practice, games and quizzes, pre-tests, post-tests, remedial measures, etc. infused with the content and methodology are needed. In other words, the goal at this stage is to evolve a learner evaluation scheme that includes a variety of assessment techniques that are consistent with the learning objectives. Refer Unit 13 of this block. Finally, it is important to remember that the design phase also underscores steps for prototype testing. For example, if a series of 20 multimedia videos are to be produced on pollution, then a prototype program on pollution needs to be designed for testing in terms of storyline, language, presentation formats, methods used, content coverage, pacing, music, sound effects overall treatments. If the prototypes are found to be effective and liked by the target group then mass production of such program series can be planned. Therefore, the plan for field testing of the prototype with the target, audience and experts need to be finalized at this stage. 11.6 Development Phase Now after the analysis and design phase, it is time to actually develop the instructional materials. This is the phase where instructional designers and developers create and assemble the content assets that were decided in the design phase. In this phase, storyboards are created, content is written, and graphics are designed. If e-learning is involved, programmers work to develop and or integrate technologies. Testing performs, debugging procedures. In this stage, the script lesson plan storyboard is written. Multimedia is produced, process documentation is done, and formative assessment of the produced program is carried out. The project is reviewed and revised according to the received feedback. 11.6.1 Instructional Design and Materials Development The development phase is as varied as the selected media.
the instructional strategies specified and the content outlined. This is where we turn our design into printed self-learning material, audio, video programs, interactive multimedia, workbooks, and training handbooks. The content is carved out based on the instructional strategies and actually produced for the selected media. There are three broad types of development processes based on the type of delivery method that is selected, print, electronic, or face-to-face -face training. As an instructional designer, you may be involved in the development of materials of a course or a program. Developing print media such as self-learning material and workbooks usually involves a team which includes instructional designers, course writers, language, editor, format editor, copy editors, graphic artists, photographers, page layout artists, and proofreaders. Depending on the size of the organization and the nature of the course, there may be additional specialists or some of these roles may be combined in a single individual. Electronic delivery systems, such as video and multimedia, require a different development process to certain extent, though the system as a whole is analogous to the development of print media. Again, nearly all projects involve a team which may include instructional designers, producers, directors, storyboard artists, script writers, set designers, computer graphics designers, and animation artists, videographers, sound technicians, lighting technicians, actors, video editors, computer programmers, program evaluators, and duplication and distribution people. Similarly, many of these roles may be combined and can be administrated by an individual for a small project, and many additional people may be involved in a large project. Your instructional designer can play roles ranging from writing lessons to supervising or managing an entire project. 1.1.6 point to stages of developing instructional materials and writing a storyboard. The process of material development, print or e-materials, is a crucial step in any instructional design process, which involves the following stages, times development of a storyboard, times preparation of concept map, times finalization of detailed content analysis and content generation, times selection of instructional strategy, times selection of media and designing a media mix, times selection of appropriate mode of multimedia, times development of multimedia packages, times preparation of achievement. Test The process of finalization of detailed content analysis, preparation concept map and formulation of objectives along with development of material have been discussed earlier. In this subsection, let us focus on writing a storyboard for a multimedia program. Let us see what is a storyboard and what are the components of a storyboard. A storyboard is a document that contains a sequential and detailed description of the Screens that will constitute the instructional design of a multimedia program. A storyboard is referred to by the entire project development team to deliver successful learning experience through multimedia. The storyboard specifies the development responsibilities for each member in the team. Therefore, minute and precise detailing of every screen is critical and important in storyboarding. Writing and execution of the storyboard is teamwork, hence the development team is constituted by instructional, designers, graphic artists, subject matter experts, programmers, managers, language, experts, and clients. Further, the multimedia storyboard needs to have a media mix and user interface design to facilitate navigation. The components of a multimedia storyboard are given as below. 1. Text 2. Audio 3. Video 4. Graphics 5. Synchronization 6. Animation 7. Interactivity 8. User Interface Design The multimedia storyboard needs to have identifiers such as subject, title, subtitle, topic section name, screen number, document version for the convenience of the learners. The user interface design should have a color scheme, screen layout, arrangement of title bars, navigation buttons, text, and graphics, etc. The on-screen text, 
screen titles, instructional text, content text, titles of labels, buttons, graphic, and text embedded in. Graphics animation need to be integrated and synchronized with audio and video. Precautions may be taken to follow precise and crisp writing, consistency in terms of font type, size, alignment, and having clear visibilities and readabilities. A multimedia needs to house a variety of resources, i. images, sketches, collage, illustrations, diagrams, flowcharts, concept maps, screenshots, maps, text balloons cutouts, animated characters, graphs, and mascot, etc. However, verification of alignment, size, color combination, placement, and overall impact needs to be monitored. Interactivity is a key to the success of any multimedia, therefore, it needs to be planned specifying the user actions and the relevant responses because it arouses interest among learners and provides scope for feedback. The storyboard is prepared based on the set, objectives and defined instructional strategies. 11.7 Implementation Phase There are a number of issues involved in implementation phase. In case of print-based instruction, these issues are duplication and distribution, the receiving audience, the reusability, the workability, the updating of the document, and making sure that all Revisions are made in the final copy, and information used from various sources, each copyright-free and ready for reuse, and acknowledgement of sources is properly done. In case of electronic instruction most of the things are similar to that of print-based instruction. A few issues are additionally taken care of, like the workability compatibility of the software on various platforms within the organizational framework. In case of Incompatibility, the access of required hardware and software for the learners must be provided so that they can use the available resources, audio-video, without any trouble, and in case of any difficulty proper assistance should be available, while print-based and electronic instructions are designed as standalone materials, training of the implementers perhaps poses the greatest challenge in the implementation phase. Who will coordinate scheduling of facilities, trainers, and participants? Will training take place in a central facility or out in the field? How will the trainees and or participants commute from the venue to residence and back? How will the workshop materials reach to the site? Will the trainers need any specific equipment? Will they need technical support on site? Will they need logistics? The implementation phase is necessarily interwoven with evaluation. As learners receive the instruction, we need to know whether they like it, whether they are learning from it, whether they are using it, and whether the materials are making any difference in their levels of learning. If the program proves weak in any of these areas, the designer need to go back, perhaps all the way back to performance analysis in some cases, to revise the approach and Continuing the cycle further till the goal is achieved, this phase helps us in detailing an implementation strategy and putting the required structures and mechanisms in place. Taking a holistic view of presenting the multimedia as a solution to a learning problem, a quality assurance mechanism must provide guidelines and indicators for both these stages. A comprehensive strategy document, an instructional manual, a roadmap for execution, or an appropriate and realistic timeline for implementation will help in effective and efficient delivery of any instruction. 11.8 Evaluation Phase Evaluation of Learning Evaluation is an integral part of instructional process. It involves three basic steps. They are 1. Identifying and defining the intended learning outcomes. 2. Constructing or selecting tests and other evaluation instruments relevant to the specified outcomes, and 3. Using the results to improve learning and instruction. Similarly, evaluation is integral to every phase of the ADI approach. Placing evaluation at the end of a project is not advised, since by that time not much can be done about the inevitable weaknesses which are uncovered. In general, there are two types of evaluation 
formative and summative. As their names imply, we conduct formative evaluation during the analysis, design, and development stages of the project and the summative evaluation during or after the product or program implemented. Formative evaluation varies depending on the type of instruction we have created. For instructional products, either print or electronic, the rapid prototyping method coupled with usability and learning ability testing can be applied. Prototypes are partial realizations of end products. They can take the form of outlines, storyboards, mock-ups, simulations, or simply preliminary versions of the product with partial implementation of either features, content, or both. Software developers often have quality control departments that specialize in usability testing, as well as software bug testing. Refer Unit 15 of this block. Dot. Formative evaluation for instructional program development is usually a little different in the case of school classrooms and other ongoing training programs, new lessons or units can be piloted as parts of a larger programs. Plugging a new module into an existing curriculum for a while can give some idea of how well the new instruction will work. Entirely new workshops or courses may need to be piloted with small groups with intensive evaluation and revision before their wide distribution. Summative evaluation is aimed more at demonstrating to sponsors how effective a finished instructional product or program is. The tools of summative evaluation include both quantitative and qualitative methods. Quantitative methods include standardized and custom-made achievement tests, attitudinal surveys, and questionnaires, etc. Qualitative methods include case studies, peer or supervisory reviews, and many more. A formative evaluation is well planned and executed, and the results are used to adjust the design and development of the product or program. The results of the summative evaluation should be a foregone conclusion. Emphasis on formative evaluation at every stage of the ADI approach is a key to success. Evaluation phase covers various aspects related to the instructional, visual, technical, design, pedagogy, and costs, etc. A framework has to be developed for effective assessment while ensuring adequate budgetary provisions are made for the same and one that allows both formative and summative evaluation. Prototype testing thus would form an important step right from the design stage itself. Purpose of learning assessment. Assessment is done to determine the progress and is used as an activity to measure student learning and other aspects. We assess people in terms of their learning and achievements. Assessment of students' learning begins with the objectives of learning. Objectives can be what we want students to learn and as instructors how can we help students strive to achieve this learning. Assessment is most effective when it reflects an understanding of learning as integrated and revealed in the performance of the learners over time. Through assessment, educators meet responsibilities to students and to the public. However, assessment should not be done just for the sake of justification of program. But more importantly to make certain that they are giving the best opportunities to students, see Block 3, Unit 15, Section 15.3. 11.9 Adaptation to the ADI Approach Rapid Prototyping Prototyping is a method of production usually applied for automobiles, architecture, animation, and software development. Rapid prototyping is a production strategy that requires starting with a very sketchy idea that evolves through multiple prototype to arrive at a finished piece. Rapid prototyping is a different approach to the design and development of instruction. For example, a typical set of prototypes developed in the process of creating a working piece of instructional software can include rough pencil, sketches, refined pencil sketches, computer general printouts, a paper mock-up, a computer-based prototype with little or no interactive programming, a computer-based prototype programmed with appropriate interactions and navigation, the final product, Brown Green, 2016. The idea of rapid prototyping as it applies to instructional design is to 
Develop learning experiences in a cycle that is continuous throughout the life of a course program. This cycle known as the spiral cycle or layered approach is considered to be iterative, meaning that courses or programs are continually improved as the cycle continues. This can be seen more clearly by comparing rapid prototyping with a classic design approach as shown below in Table 11.1. Table 11.1 Comparison of classic design approach with rapid prototyping approach, classic design approach, rapid prototyping approach. 1. Concept definition 1. Concept definition 2. Requirements definition 2. Implementation of a skeletal system 3. Preliminary design 3. User evaluation and concept refinement 4. Detailed design 4. Implementation of Refined Requirements 5. Code Implementation 5. User Evaluation and Concept Refinement 6. Test and Acceptance 6. Implementation of Refined Requirements in a Continuous Cycle 11.10 Summary Instructional Design is the systematic development of instructional specifications using learning and instructional theories to ensure the quality of instruction. This process leads to analysis of learning needs and goals in order to develop a system for accomplishing these needs. It includes development of instructional materials and activities, tryout and evaluation of all instructions and learner activities. There are a number of models and theories which are followed for the development of instructional materials using ADI approach. However, ADI is the most popular and generic strategy among all and is most commonly used by instructional designers. The five phases analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate ADI represent a dynamic, flexible guideline for designing effective instructional materials. To sum up, it may be stated that the ADI approach is a systematic way that leads to the instructional design process. It provides instructional designers with a framework in order to make sure that their instructional products are effective and that their creative processes are as efficient as they can possibly be. ADD stands for the steps of the instructional design model. Each step has an outcome that leads to the subsequent step. Evaluation is essential after each step. Times analyze, define the needs and constraints. Times design. Specify learning activities, assessment and choose methods and media. Times develop, begin production, formative evaluation, and revise. Times implement, put the plan into action. Times evaluate, evaluate the plan from all levels for next implementation. Thank you. Subscribe to our channel for more updates. And we will see you with the next chapter.